Good afternoon and welcome to Crestview High School, where today WSN brings you a Northwest Conference matchup between two of the top three teams in the conference. The Lipsick Vikings, they are 7-0 in conference play, but today we have Lincoln View, who is 5-0, playing at Crestview, who is 6-1 in conference play. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play here today for you. We're going to give you the lineups, first of all, for Lincoln View. Their starting pitcher will be Chase Overhold, and he will bat in the number one spot. The center fielder, Holden Price, will hit second. The third batter will be Jack Dunlap. The first baseman, Miles Moody, will be at the catcher, and he will bat fourth. In the number five spot is Austin Backrath, the third baseman. Aiden Hardesty will be the designated hitter today, and he will hit for Cal Evans, who is in left field. Number seven it will be Reed Jackson, the second baseman. Number eight will be Luke Bolenbacher in right field. And number 15, the shortstop, hitting in the sixth in the last spot, will be Seth Brandt. On the other side, for the Crestview Knights, they will start Hunter Jones. He is the catcher and will bat first. Second is Zane Serrigan. He is the shortstop. Hitting third with Bryson Penix. He's at third base. Number four, Aiden Hyatt. Aiden is the second baseman hitting fourth. Connor Sheets went fifth. He's at first base. Evan Hart will be in, right, in left field. He will hit next. And then Huxley Gross will be in right field. The number eight heater is David Serrigan. He will be the designated hitter today. He will be hitting for the pitcher, Preston Kreischer, and Levi Grace will be in right field. You can see we're bringing out the starting lineups for today, kind of set the stage for this. I said a moment ago, Lipsick is 7-0 and in, the con in conference play. They will have a game this Friday night with Lincoln View. Lincoln View still has this game to play. Plus that game with Lipsick on Friday night and Saturday, they will play the Ada Bulldogs. And of course, what Crestview would have to do today is win this one and then have Lincoln View defeat Lipsick and get a three-way tie at the top of the, the conference race by the time the season comes to an end on Saturday afternoon. Our, our officials today behind the plate will be Ron Ferner and, and uh, the bases today will be Dick Anderson. Special moment right now. On the mound will be a good friend of mine and my broadcast partner today, and that would be Mr. Dave Bowen. Dave will be retiring from uh, Crestview this year as a principal. He's been a, super, a principal. He's been an athletic director, a longtime coach, teacher. He actually began his teaching career back at Lincoln View, and Lincoln View, uh, uh, along with Coach Wharton here today, wanted Coach Bowen to come out and throw the opening pitch today and kind of a special moment for him. His catcher with Brian Sheets. Brian's been a long time maintenance groundskeeper here at Crestview, and he's retiring again to this season as well. So special moment for Coach Ball. We want to get that on tape here for you today before we begin today's matchup. extends far beyond the confines of our school, and the inspiration you provided will continue to echo through the halls of Crestview, leaving a legacy of excellence for years to come. So Dave Bowen will be on the mound. Is our retiring longtime head of grounds, Brian Sheets. Thank you for your unrelenting desire to make our field second to none. The pride and passion you have invested in your craft is obvious and noticed by everyone. It's about 80 Thanks, degrees here today with the wind blowing directly in from right field. So that will be something that uh, will be a factor in today's game. Thank you, Sheets. And here's Coach Bowen will step up to the mound. And there's our first pitch from Coach Dave Bowen today. And we really appreciate Dave, what he's done here at Crestview, and look forward to many, many years, hopefully him working with us at WOSM. We're going to take a break. We're back with the opening pitch after this. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview High School. It's Lincoln View 13 and 6, 5 and 0 oh in the Northwest Conference. Crestview 12 and 3. They are 6 and 1 in the NWC. We talked to you about the starting batting order for each team today. Let's look at the pitching lineup. Preston Crusher will start for the Crestview Knights today. He is 3 and 1 on the season with a 1.40 ERA and 35 innings. He has given up 24 hits, 11 walks. He has 40 strikeouts in his 35 innings. 
Mr. Bowen, welcome back. Congratulations, my man. That's a really nice thing to do, and we wish you best in retirement. Thank you so much, Mark. I'll tell you what, uh, the adrenaline got popped, pumping out there a little bit, and I didn't throw it in the dirt. That's you did the main not. thing, and uh, what an honor from Coach Wharton and uh, the Crestview players and uh, baseball program, and appreciate uh, Lincoln View as well, and Coach Fishball. We talked about it today, and he gave me some pointers as well. So here we go. Chase Overholt will step in. It's 319. He has seven RBI and 17 runs scored on the season. First pitch strike from Kreischer. And that pitch missed wide. Our presenting sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Ball's fouled away down the right field side. Dave, it's a pretty good sized park here, isn't it? It's 330 down the lines, it's 360 into the center field area, and uh, it, it, it's a tough poke to get one out of here. It is, and again, with the way they changed the bats a few years ago in the name of safety, that, that really made it tough to get it out of here. Uh, just a beautiful facility here. That's overall hits that one Ball well. Yeah, hit up in the air. The wind's got a hold of that one a bit. It's going to fall out there as the outfielder, uh, Evan Hart, couldn't track it down. And we're going to get a double on the first batter. Got up in the sky and got the wind into it, Dave. Yeah, and it's a white sky, so I think Hart lost that with a little Not bit of wind the and with the, uh, again, the, the overcast sky a little bit. The sun's coming through, but that's a tough, tough field up there in the sky to be able to take take a hold of that one. We saw it come into play. Lead-off double. The top two batters for Lincoln View and Overholt and Price, they are the glue guys. A lot of speed for Coach uh, Fishball, and he, he's got one on right here to begin with. Went after a bunt opportunity to hold in Price. He has 352 on the season, 14 RBI, and has scored 18 runs. The top two guys in the batting order today, both sophomores. Both sophomores, and as you said, 18 runs for Price. That leads Lincoln View. Overholt right behind him in second place in that category with 17 runs scored. Breaking ball went wide. One and one's our count. Coach Fishball showing the signs down there. Lincoln View averages 6.1 runs per game. They hit 311 as a team. Pulls the bat back, and it's 2-1. and one. Yeah, six runs per game, give up three on defense. Crestview, five runs on offense, four runs on defense. Crestview, in their 12 wins, nine one-run victories, Mark. Just incredible. Two and one's the count. Crusher with the hold. That ball is bunted foul. We'll make it two and two. Perhaps, Dave, some of that could be attributed to coaching because Coach Wharton is in his 41st season, over 600 victories, and he knows how to win one run, one run games. Yeah, member of the Ohio High School Baseball Coaches Association Hall of Fame. 41 years, as you said. That first year was the spring of 1984. This, this guy's senior year, and... <laughs> We were talking before the game after this pitch, see if we can get it in. Fastball strike, swung through it. First strikeout today for Kreischer. Our strikeouts today are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The left-handed hitting Jack Dunlap steps in. He hits 311 on the season. He's got seven RBI. Ball's hit up and down the right field line. Tracking it down is Huck, Huxley Gross. And we're going to get our first run of the game on the head first slide by Chase Overholt. Nice piece of hitting by Dunlap to go with the pitch. It was outside. He took it right down the right field line. Overholt comes all the way around to score. Lancer's on the board in the top of the first. Now Eighth RBI on the season for Jack Dunlap. That brings up the catcher, Miles Moody. He hits 383. Does the junior catcher. But to follow up on that story, Coach Wharton's first year, the spring of 1984, my senior year here. But ball's hit up in the air to left field. And with a better beat on it this time was Evan Hart. Records the out. That'll be the second out of the inning. 
And when Coach Wharton now came to Crestview, baseball, just number three, Austin helped Hart. to reestablish what Crestview baseball was all about. We had some good teams prior to that, but I remember telling him at the end of that first season, I, I don't think you'll stay, Coach. You're really good for Crestview baseball, but I don't think you'll stay. I'm glad I was wrong. Austin Bockrath, a 373 hitter, steps in. He's going to ground it up the middle. And there to make the play, six uh, unassisted is the shortstop, Zane uh, Kerrigan, and that gets out of the inning. But on our Red Oak Realty scoreboard, it's going to be Lincoln View 1 as Crestview comes to bat. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Lincoln View with a one to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the first inning. On the mound for the Lincoln View Lancers will be Chase Overholt, the sophomore. Chase is 3-0 and on the season, 21 point uh, in two-thirds innings pitched, and Dave, his ERA, 0.00. It's pretty good. I think that'll work for <laughs> I you. I think so. Yeah, 21 innings, and number three in that category behind Dunlap with 32 and two-thirds innings, and Luke Bollenbacher with 44 and one-third innings, but Coach Fishbaugh likes overhaul on the mound on this for this one. 21 and two-thirds innings. He's given up 12 hits, just four walks, and he has struck out 26 batters in those 21 and two-thirds innings. Hunter Jones will lead off for Crestview. Hunter hits 319 on the season, and one thing that uh, this team does, Dave, they accept a lot of walks. Um, they're averaging about four walks per game, and although the team batting average is not very high, they do make make a lot of difference with those walks. Yeah, any way to get on base is the motto for Crestview Baseball this year. As you said, their team batting average, not the best, right at 200, but they get on with walks. They put the ball in play, make the um, defense execute, and they get on by air quite often as well. Hunter Jones will step in. A little unusual to see your catcher as your leadoff guy. Yeah, exactly. He is the leader of this team. Coach Wharton likes to have him right up there in that leadoff position. He has 15 hits, leads Crestview in that category, 19 runs scored, and eight stolen bases. A lot of times your catcher, he's not running the bases that much, but Hunter Jones ball's is. ball's hit up in the air to center field. Holden Price will track that down, and we'll get a first out. On the fly ball to center field. We talked about the tenure of Coach Warden. You know, Coach Fishball, though, ninth year at the helm for Lincoln View. All he's done is been to state twice in that time period, and he is the reigning Northwest Conference Coach of the Year for the last three years, 21, 22, and 23. Zane Serrigan pops it up to the first baseman and tracking it down will be Jack Dunlap. So we get a foul ball out to the first baseman on a first pitch. Well, here in the first inning for both teams, Mark, they're not shying away from swinging the bat. No. A lot of first pitch hitting. Bryson Penick steps in. The third baseman hits 269 on the season. Overhold's thrown, what, to three pitches now? And that one's going to be wide. With that 269 batting average, he is second on the team for the Knights, trailing Hunter Jones, who you said Leads Crestview at 319. Fastball at the top of the zone. Makes it one and one. Penix is a junior playing third base. Breaking ball. And that's a strike. One and two is the count. Chase Overholt. And breaking ball is a called strike three as Penix tried to get out of the box, but not in time. And that will be a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken strikeout. We'll go to the top of the second. It's 1-0 Lincoln View. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We go to the top of the second inning with Lincoln View on top, one to nothing. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. Back to the mound will come Preston Kreischer. We should mention, Dave, what we uh, initially called a double in the opening inning. The official scorekeeper ruled as an error on the left fielder, so that becomes an unearned run. And we'll take away one of the uh, two hits in the inning and make it an error instead. Yeah, that was a tough Leading call. for the Lancers. The designated hitter, number 11. Aiden Hardesee, the DH, steps in, hits 333 on the season and swings through that pitch. 
And the first pitch swinging continues. Both teams aggressive in the batter's box. Chrysler's throwing a strike to the first bat pitch to each batter in the game so far. And that one's fouled back. And I had a chance to see this Lancer baseball team earlier this year against Marion Local. And they are aggressive at the plate. They like to sit on the fastball. And you bring that down the middle of the plate, they're going to make you pay. That stays high. One and two is the count. Not a bad 0-2 pitch right there. Raise the eye level. See where Crasher goes here. Breaking ball is wide. It's two and two. Hunter Jones is the catcher. Jones going to go play baseball at Ashland University next year. Fastball, and that will be a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken strikeout of the swinging variety, the second strikeout for Kreischer. Now batting, Big batting game here, ball. always a rivalry, uh -huh. Lincoln View and Crestview, and every year, in just about every sport, but especially baseball, has such league implications. And right now, Lipsick 7-0 in the league. Lincoln View 5-0, Crestview 6-1. Crestview needs a victory to put themselves in position to possibly get a tie in the league because Lincoln View needs to play lip sync. Yeah. That pitch was high. Reed Jackson steps in the second baseman, 262 average. That will level the count at one and one. That was the first pitch or the first batter to not have a strike on the opening pitch. Back comes Kreischer again. That's going to be grounded towards the second baseman. Play made by the second baseman. Aiden Hell does Aiden a nice height. Hyatt. Hyatt. Aiden Hyatt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does a nice job there at second base going to his left. Now batting the right fielder, number 33, Luke <laughs> Bolenbacher. A couple of quick outs. Luke Bolenbacher steps in the right fielder. It's 256 on the season. Has scored 10 runs in his eighth spot in the order. Senior. Foul ball. Lincoln View starts six seniors. Crestview starts four. Interestingly enough, both of them start freshman shortstops. Yeah. Breaking ball, and that is wide. That was a good pitch. And talking to both coaches, I asked them, who do you feel has been your most improved player from the beginning of the season until now? And both of them mentioned those freshmen, Zane Sargon for Crestview at shortstop and Seth Brandt, a freshman starting at shortstop for the Lancers. Brandt started the season on the JV squad. One and two after that fastball in the outside corner. And, ooh, that was a really tough pitch to take, Dave. That was right there on the corner and just wide. Good, two and two. good plate discipline right there by Bolenbacher. And that one is outside. We'll run full count. With two outs here in the top of the second inning. This is a big pitch momentum-wise. You want that one, two, three inning, try and get momentum neutralized and back on your side of the Knights. And if you're Lincoln View, you'll take that base on balls, trot down to first base. Might have overthrown that one a bit. It got into the dirt. And that will bring up the freshman, Seth Brandt. It's 280 on the season. Bolenbacher will be at first base. Yeah. As I mentioned, I saw the Lancers play Marion Local earlier se this season. That was the first start for Seth Brandt against the Flyers at shortstop. And Coach Fishball's just been very pleased with his progression. Strike. That was a pitch on the outside corner and at the knees, and he can't put it in a better spot than that. 0-1. Like two. Again, oh, pitching him away. 0 2 pitch. Don't want to give him anything to hit here. Ball's going to be grounded. First baseman makes the play on it and takes the ball to the bag himself, does Connor Sheets. And that will bring inning number two a close to the Lancers. They're still up 1 0. You're watching high school baseball in WOSA. Back at Crestview. Our presenting sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. As we go to the bottom of the second, Aiden Hyatt 
the uh, second baseman hits. Connor Sheets, the first baseman, followed by Evan Hart, the left fielder. As Chase Overholt's back for inning number two. Hyatt is 229 on the season. He does have 13 RBI. Now, are you an RBI guy or an RBIs guy? Mm, I do have apostrophe uh, S here, 13 RBIs. But there's no possession. I get it. I understand your question. Well, I did a game earlier this year with Todd Walker, and he insisted it's RBI. Well, runs batted, batted in. in. Yeah, so okay. Okay. just want to make sure we're on the same page with this. But I also like to just call them ribeye steaks. There you go. 1-1. Mm -hmm. one, one. We talked Here's about the, the league implications of this game. You know, both of these teams make their – Presence known in the Northwest Conference. Crestview has 23 baseball NWC championships. Lincoln View, only five, but four in the last five years. Frozen with a breaking ball. And we get our second strikeout of the game. Strikeout scenario brought to you by Lee's famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. That will bring in Connor Sheets, the first baseman. Breaking ball stayed high. 23 NWC championships for Crestview, five for Lincoln View. The last two years, it's been Lincoln View first, Crestview second in the league. Dropped a curveball over the outside corner, one and one. Lincoln View also won it in 2021. And Lipsick, who is currently leading the league, with their 7-0 record as that breaking ball caught the inside part of the plate. It's 1-2. and two. Have not won a NWC championship. Of course, they've only been in the league, what, just, just a few years, right? A handful of years. Yeah, and this is their last chance yes. to win it as well as they are going back to the BVC. The BVC. Yep. 2-2 two and two now as that pitch was outside. They, along with the Ada Bulldogs, will be heading to the mm -hmm. BVC. Lima Central Catholic coming back to the NWC. Tapper, third baseman, makes gets a high hop, and here's the throw across the diamond. Did he get down on time? He did. Good throw by Austin Bockrath. Better play by Jack Dunlap to get the out. Two up, two down for the Knights. For Crestview, the left fielder, number 17, Evan. Evan Hart steps in. He's the left fielder. It's 188 on the season. Does Evan? Junior. LCC coming into the conference. Fort Laramie for football For football only, only yep. Breaking ball. Strike. That's a good pitch on the outside corner. Dave, maybe you can clarify this for me. I, I've been told by the LCC people it's kind of a four-year trial period for them in the conference. Is that accurate? That's correct. Foul ball. Uh, we made it clear to the administration at LCC we want to see how things play out. And uh, everybody is on the same page with that. And if everything works fine, we'll continue that relationship. 0-2. Oh, Breaking ball. That's ripped into left field. That's going to be a base hit. First hit of the game for the Knights by Evan Hart as he rips one into the left field. And that will bring up Huxley Gross. Nice field. piece of hitting right mm -hmm. there by Evan Hart. Stayed back on that pitch and came through the zone, drove it right over short and third base. Perhaps with an 0-2 count, a little better pitch to him than uh, Chase Overall probably didn't get that one where he wanted it, but still a good swing on the ball, and this will bring Gross to the plate. Ball gets into the dirt, and with the wild pitch, Knocked down by Moody, but not able to make a play on it. That puts a runner in scoring position with Hart. Gross has two, uh, does not have an RBI on the season. Be a great time for him to pick up his first one. With that wild pitch, you know, a free base there for Trestview. See if they can make the Lancers pay. Fastball misses, it's 2-0. Breaking ball. That's going to be hit to the shortstop. Pick up and throw it across the diamond. And we get the out on the play by Seth Brandt. So the base hit puts a runner on, but they can't move him around. And after two, it's one to nothing in favor of the Lancers on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN.
We go to the top of the third. The Lincoln V. Lancers won the Crestview Knights nothing on our Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Red Oak Realty is rooted in excellence. And back for his third trip to the mound is Preston Kreischer. He will face the top of the order, Overholt, Price, and Dunlap. Just the way you want to start if you're the Lancers, top of the lineup, try and put the pressure on the Crestview defense, see if they can scratch another run across like they did at the beginning of the game. Pitches a strike, breaking ball. Overholt was on with that air to the left field area that was so difficult for the play out there by Evan Hart. That ball's popped up over our heads, Dave. Foul ball back. You know, we talked about Lincoln View really having some su success here in the last four or five years. I asked Coach Wharton, what's the last time uh, Crestview's beat the Lancers? He said, I don't know. It's too long. <laughs> it's been too long. I asked Coach Fishball the same question. Uh, 2018, you beat us in tournament. In 2017, you beat us in the NWC. Yeah. Young you guy versus the guy that's been around for a while. <laughs> That ball's hit out in the left field again. That will be a clean single. In fact, it bounces past the left fielder, Hart. It's a kind of a bad hop for him. That will be a double, Dave. Yeah, bad hop. Not anything wrong with how Hart played that baseball. Just mm. kicked left on him. That's uh, two well-hit balls by Chase Overholt to left field. He's stung the ball twice. Holden Price will step in with his 352 average. Let's see if Coach Fishball tries to play it the same now way he did in the first inning. Number he really had Price, Price. Uh, square up and look to bunt the ball down the first baseline. Pulled the ball back, or pulled the bat back that time. It's 1-0. Playing for a run right here. Push the ball to the right side, let overhole, get to third with one out if the defense executes. Pulled the bat back again. 2-0. Oh. Now this is where you got to be thinking dead red fastball. I'd still think you want to have the bun on here. But with that 352 batting average, you never know. Good eye as it goes to 3-0. and oh. See if the take will be on now. Crusher walked the batter back in the second inning when he walked Luke Bolenbacher. And he's going to step back, get the sign again. And that pitch is high, so we have a four-pitch walk. To put runners on first and second. And nobody out for Dunlap. Yeah, little Kenny Loggins danger zone here now for the Knights. Baseman, Top Dunlap. two guys in the lineup on base. Here comes the three, four, and five. Carson or Preston Crasher is going to have to bear down now. Defense is going to be going to have to be rock solid. Mark struck out the first time. Did Dunlap? That's a strike on the outside part of the plate. Dunlap, the senior, has 10 RBIs on the season. And that one's hit the center field, coming in to make the play. And they're going to get the force of second, aren't they? Yes, they yep. are. The ball dropped in front of Levi Grace. He did a nice yeah, job he, of yes, fielding that on the hop. And... A runner on now second man. or on first base, Holden Price. He, he played that the right way. There wasn't much he could do in this, that situation, um, but did a nice job trying to get to second, but they get the force. So the fielder's choice for Dunlap puts him on at first base. Overholt was able to move up to third, and that will bring in Miles Moody with runners on the corners. Let's see what kind of play F Coach Fishball has. Waves at a breaking ball that's probably out of the zone. Good pitch. Hunter Jones, one of the best catchers, not only in the Northwest Conference, but Northwest Ohio. I don't think Coach Fishball will have Dunlap running here. That ball's fouled back. Oh, and two is the count. Talking with Coach Wharton. I tried to put a number on it. I said, where do you put him as far as catchers in your tenure as Crestview? Baseball coach, he said uh, Hunter Jones is easily in the top three. 
Good pitch on the outside part of the plate. But it's one and two. And I'm not going to say names to get either Coach Ward or myself in trouble <laughs> with that. Snaps off that breaking ball, which is wide. Count goes to 2-2. Two -two. Well, you know, Miles Moody in the batter's box, the catcher for Lincoln View. He's very, very strong behind the dish as well. Great defensive catch. Just a junior. Fastball. And that is runs the count full. So after being up 0-2, three consecutive pitches have been out of the zone. Hunter Brock, Austin Brockrath is on deck. Big pitch here. All the way around. Looking to see if Dunlap has a play on here. No, he has to come in with one. Miles Moody building the tension by stepping out of the box, calling timeout. Full count, one out, runners on the corner. Flew out to left field, his first at bat. That's going to be grounded back up the middle. And Kreischer got just enough of a glove on it to make it so he couldn't get a play. And that's that tough situation as a pitcher. Instincts tell you to go get it, but if he would have let that go through, they might have been able to get the force at second and hold, overhold at third because he was not running initially, but all hands are safe and a run scores. Chase Overholt scores his second time in the game. He's got both of the runs for the Lancers. Our scoreboard brought to you by Red Oak Realty. And we're going to get a little pinch runner action here. And that is number two, Dave. Headed to second base. And I'm looking for my Lancer roster. I have that as Max Hammonds. Okay. So Hammonds will run for Moody. And that is the son of uh, Lincoln View Varsity basketball coach, Brett Hammonds. And that was a hit for Moody as well. Uh, actually, RBI. he's running for Dunlap, didn't he? Yes. Okay. Balls popped up, Dave. Duck. We're good. All right. We're good here. All right. As Bockgrass steps into the batter's box with two runners on. Another first pitch strike, though, from Kreischer. We're going back to that fielder's. Well. That ball's poked out to the center fielder. And coming in to make a play, honestly, by Grace. A nice catch by Grace out there in center field on Austin Bachrath, the first team Northwest Conference selection from last year. Now batting. So two outs. Hitter, 11, and Austin that will bring up the designated hitter, Aiden Hardesty. Looked at a called third, third strike. Or swung, at a called, uh, swung at his third strike back in the uh, to open up inning number two. Pitch is low and away. So here in the third inning, Hardest, or Crasher has not been as clean as, as we've noticed in the, on the bump. And Lincoln View's taking advantage of it. There's a drive. That ball's hit up in the air a long way to center field, but circling around to make the play on it is Grace, and that will get us out of the inning. But the Lancers put another one on the board. They will go to the bottom of the third, up 2 to nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview. Knights head to the bottom of third, facing a two-run deficit. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. And they will send up eight, nine, and one. David Saragan will open up, Levi Grace, and then back to the top where Hunter Jones will hit. Ball's hit to third. Nice hop and a good play down there by Austin Bachrath. And we have a quick one pitch out. Bachrath does what a first teamer from the Northwest Conference from last year should do. Fields that nicely. Nice throw over to first base and now Jack Dunlap. Fielder, first pitch hitting Levi again for Grace. the Knights. Levi Grace will step in. He's the center fielder today as the senior. Had two nice catches out there in the last half inning. See if he can bring that mojo and momentum to the plate. Swings through the first pitch.
That one's popped up on the infield. And Overholt comes over and plays it himself for the second out of the inning. Now, Mark, how do you feel about that? Cardinal rule says the pitcher should be yeah, the last guy to catch a pop-up other than overruling the catcher. Yeah, but in high school baseball, your pitcher is usually one of your best athletes. Go Excellent get the ball. Excellent point. Yep. Excellent point. To the top of the order we go with Hunter Jones. And he swings on the first pitch. That's hit over towards the first base dugout. And we'll go out of play. Unless the catcher says stay away from it, if he wants to go get it, let him go get it. Again, Crestview aggressive at the plate. All three batters this inning have swung at the first pitch. Jones hit a fly ball in the opening inning for an out. Pitch was inside. As we mentioned earlier, Hunter Jones provides that senior leadership along with the other seniors, but he just a little tick above for this squad. And it's nice when the guy that's facing everybody else out there on defense is one of your top leaders, top vocal guys, Hunter Jones. It's like your quarterback in football. Mm -hmm. You want somebody back mm -hmm. there that uh, understands the game, has got everything in front of him, can make the call. First, Two and one. Yep, first team selection in 23, second in 22, honorable mention in 21. That one ball's hit into right field, and the play will be made by the right fielder, Luke Bolenbacher, and we will go to the top of the fourth with a score two to nothing in favor of the Lancers. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSA. We're back at Crestview, where today our presenting sponsor is Loudex Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudex.com. The second baseman, Reed Jackson, will step in the fourth inning for Lincoln View. Jackson, Bolabacher, Brandt. The bottom three in the order as he takes the first pitch strike. Grounded out to the second baseman back in the second inning. Ball's in the dirt. One and one's the count. If you like track day, this is your weekend. Friday night, the uh, WBL meet is at Bath. The Midwest Athletic Conference meets Versailles. Those will both air on WTLW this weekend, WOSN. Fly ball and a long run, but the left fielder makes a nice play on that one by Evan Hart. And that will be the first out of inning number four. And then on Saturday is... Is... Northwest Conference meets Saturday? That doesn't sound right. I know there's another track. It is. It's it Northwest is, Conference meets Saturday, correct? Week, yes. yes. Northeast Thursday, Saturday. Yeah. Is Saturday? Northwest Conference. Conference. Northwest yep. Conference. I thought it was. Had to freeze for a moment. That ball's grounded right down the third baseline. Here's a long throw by Penix. Actually, yeah, he, he just, just kept, kept it, it, didn't yes. he? Yeah, he just ate mm -hmm. it down there, didn't he? I was looking, wait for him to make the throw. And that will be a single for Bolenbacher. He walked in his first appearance. Might as well just eat it and throw it away, Dave, or take a chance. Yeah, and Bolenbacher one for one. You know what is really nice? When your number eight hitter is a second-teamer NWC selection mm. from last year, he's been on base both times, says Luke Bolenbacher. Seth Brandt will step in, the number nine hitter. He grounded out to the first baseman to end inning number two. And he's going to make a bunt, nice bunt out in the middle of the field, but quick play and the sack flash from sack works. That's a good play by Hunter Jones to get out and make that play. Excellent execution all the way around. Great bunt, moves the runner up. Bolenbacher now at second. Now batting. Jones with the throw to first. Pitcher, and here is Chase Overholt. On by a hit the left field that was called an error, and then he doubled the next time up. He has scored both runs so far in the game for the Lancers. Breaking balls outside. Yeah, Overholt's having an outstanding game. Would you be pretty careful with him with first base exactly, open? Exactly, yep. yes. Even though he'd go from the frying yeah, pan to the fire. Holden Price is up next. He's 0 for 2 on the day, but hits 352 on the season. 
Fastballs hit to center field and over to make the play is Grace. So the Lancers get, get the runner on base. They move him to second, but they can't get it in. And the fly ball to center field ends the inning. It'll be 2 to nothing, Lancers. We head to the bottom of the fourth. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Our strikeout sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Zane Serrigan will step in. 2-3-4 for the Knights, Mark. Going to make some noise. This would be a good time to get the band warmed up. Oh, world's first pitch is high. You know, Dave, I was leaving home today. My wife says, hey, I've got to be out of town tonight. Can you get dinner on your own? I'm thinking, I'm driving right by the Delphus KFC. Mm, yes. <laughs> Ball's hit in the left field. And the play is made out there by Cal Evans. Yeah, Lee's famous recipe right there in Delphus, America's friendly city, friendliest now, city. Is that third baseman? The now, moniker. How did you do on making all four of your I stops? I still, you still have not been to Wapak. You got to get to the Wapak. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Got to take the wife and the dogs on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you phrased that correctly. There's an and in there, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm making sure of that. She was here today. She was here. Yeah. To First watch, pitch ball. You watch her husband throw that ceremonial first pitch out there. And Dogs cheered. Dogs cheered. Yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Foul ball. One and one's the count. Overholt's just, he's just coming yeah. at the batter. So here it is. Hit it. I got two runs. Not going to mess around. Not nibbling. Hit my pitch. I got defense behind me. Breaking ball is just kind of weakly hit towards the second baseman, Hyatt. Did he get it in time? He did. Bang, bang, play at first base, but I heard glove bag. Excellent hustle yep. down the line by Penix, just not able to beat it out. Now and again, that's just a fundamental piece. The second baseman, Reed Jackson, comes in hard on that he one. Had to. Made a really good play. Yes. Did Jackson, the senior. Breaking ball to Aiden Hyatt. Ball one. We mentioned St. Sergan is one of the most improved players for Crestview. Aiden Hyatt as well. The juniors had an outstanding season for Coach Wharton in this Crestview baseball program. Fastball, swung through that, makes it one and one. Much improved from last year to this year. Takes a pitch that's on the outside part of the plate. It's one and two as overall, as you say, he's just coming after him. Mm -hmm. Got this 2-0 lead, I'm gonna come after you. And got him swinging. That will be a lead, same as recipe chicken strikeout. And that will end inning number four for the Crestview Knights. We'll go to the top of the fifth. It's Lancers two, Knights nothing. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Our presenting sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Two, three, and four for the Lincoln View Lancers here in the fifth inning. That would be Price, Dunlap, and Moody. 0 for 2 today, Holden Price. And he swings through a first pitch, strike one. Again, the Lancers 13 and 6, Crestview 12 and 3. That ball's lined up the middle. Holden Price went down and got a fastball and lined it into center field. And he will become a first uh, base runner here in this inning for the fifth inning. And that will bring up Dunlap to the plate. He's a, he's a, put on by a fielder's choice and struck out. Jack Dunlap, a second teamer, Northwest Conference last year, honorable mention as a sophomore. That's high. One of the leaders on this squad, real vocal leader for Coach Fishball. 
He and Miles Moody provide that leadership for this squad. Lead off runner on for the Lancers. Breaking ball drops out of the zone. It's 2 0. That 13 and 6 record, Lincoln View plays a very tough no, schedule. Early on, they're 1 and 2. And Coach Fishball said we had the Wayne Trace Raiders coming up as we see this pitch. 3 and 0. And he said that, that win over Wayne Trace, who ended up winning the Green Meadows mm -hmm. Conference this year, was the best win up to this point in the season that really stemmed the tide and got them believing in themselves, which they had a lot of belief anyway. Again, Lincoln View has no reason not to with the success they've had lately. But they're one and two, floundering a little bit, got things straightened out against Lincoln View, and it's been move forward from there. That will be the a walk to Dunlap. That will be the second walk of the game for Preston Kreischer, and we're going to get a little meeting at the mound. And, Dave, while we do that, let's talk a little about the tournament for these two teams. Crestview is in the uh, Coldwater District, and they were the number two seed on Tuesday the 14th. Waynesfield, the 11th seed, will play Fort Recovery, who was number six seeded. That will be at Fort Recovery. The winner then will come here on the 16th to play the Knights. They then move on to, or the winner will move on to the Coldwater District. Those semis are on Wednesday, the following week at 7.30, and the district final will be on Friday the 24th at 6 p.m. And let's look at then what Lincoln View is doing. They're in the Patrick Henry District. The number nine seed, Ottoville, will play the number eight seed, Kaleida, on Tuesday the 14th. The winner will play at Lincoln View on the 16th, those are 5 p.m. starts. And then their district is also on a Wednesday the 22nd, and uh, they play uh, at 2 o'clock. Could be a matchup with Lipstick again, could be. Mm -hmm. And the second game would be at 5 p.m. And then that district final is on Friday at 5 p.m. Both number two seeds in yep. their respective districts. You know, a little going against according to Hoyle, if you will, with where Lincoln View placed themselves on the bracket as the two seed. As we see that pitch right there in the dirt. It's a wild pitch, going to move both. Well, only moved up one runner. Price moved up on the wild pitch in the dirt as Jones kept it in front of him. Dunlap stayed where he was at. Yeah, going back to that bracket, back in our day, the number yeah. two seed had to go opposite exactly. number one in any sport when they eliminated that rule, and Lincoln View jumped up in the number one seed Lipstick bracket. The ball's hit up in the air, foul, and Jones comes over and makes the play on the foul hit by Moody. That'll be the first out. And talking again with Coach Fishbaugh, I said, okay, you, you jumped in the number one seed's bracket. What was the thinking? He said, well, we have a lot of respect for Lipstick, first and foremost. We haven't played them yet, but we know their program. But Ayersville and Patrick Henry, they both have some really, really strong pitching. And we just felt a little more comfortable going against a league foe. And we'll see how that plays out, obviously. With one out in the inning, Austin Bockrath will step in. That was a much needed out with runners on the corners. Breaking ball into dirt. And good job by Jones to keep that one in front of him. And on a delayed steal. Dunlap ends up at second base. So as we said, teams don't run against Hunter Jones, but in that situation, the delayed steal done to perfection by Lincoln View takes away the force at second, and both runners now in scoring position. Bockrath has 13 RBIs on the season. That pitch is outside. It's 2-0. Preston Kreischer today. Couple of strikeouts, couple of walks. Yeah, he's really going to have to dig in here. It'd be great to serve up a strikeout for yourself in this situation. Bockrath calls time and backs out. Crasher, second team NWC selection from last year. Honorable mention as a sophomore. He's been out there in these situations in the past. Fastball's outside. That'll make it 3 0. There is an open base, but you put him on, you're looking at uh, Hardesty, who's a 333 hitter. 
Yeah, this Lincoln View lineup offensively, nobody below 200 in any way, shape, yeah. or form. Team batting average of 311. They average 6.1 runs per game to the Lancers. And we're in the top of the fifth. And they're going to put him on. Put him on. Just walked him. Yep. So Austin Bockrath will walk. And that will be the third walk given up by Kreischer. And we'll bring in Aiden Hardesty to hit. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a flyout. But he has seven RBIs on the season. And... He's looking to break this one open. All the numbers say that's what you should have done there. Now it's up to Crestview to execute to make sure Lincoln View doesn't make him pay. The double yep. double play ball comes into effect now with the force at any base. Breaking ball was on the outside part of the plate. That sidearm breaking ball that Kreischer throws. And we see like one. the Knights in at first and third. Double play depth at second and short. Fastballs hit up in the air. Foul. And quickly 0-2. Outfield. And, you know, Dave, when you've got a really good catcher like Hunter Jones, you can throw anything. You know, you might yes. throw that curveball in the dirt, but he's good enough. He's going to block it for you and save that run. Yep. The whole arsenal is there for you. Here's that breaking ball, and it got him swinging. A Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout of Austin Brockrath comes at a great time for Preston Kreischer. Strikeout number three. That allows the corners to back up. Now you have a force at any base as Crestview tries their best to get out of this threat by the Lancers. Lancers, a base hit away from breaking this thing open. Reed Jackson 0 for 2 on the day, a ground out and a fly out. Breaking ball, it's in the dirt. Going to try to score. Here comes the play, and got him. What a play by Hunter Jones. Yeah, great play by Hunter Jones. Aggressive base running by Jack, or excuse me, Holden Price. With the speed that Price possesses, you're going to let him do that nine times out of ten just in that situation. Hunter Jones with the stop. And that will keep the score at two for the Lancers. Crestview coming to back. They have not scored yet in the baseball game. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview, where our scoreboard sponsor today is Red Oak Realty. Rooted in excellence is Red Oak Realty, and we stayed at 2 to nothing, Dave, thanks to a really nice play by Hunter Jones. Yeah, Hunter Jones, the ball got away a little bit. We just talked about how he does such a great job with his body. He did deflect it with his body, and then he made the great decision to just try and get back to the plate himself. That runner would have been safe. Price would have been safe if he would have tried to toss that to his pitcher who was coming to home plate as well. And kept the ball and showed it to the umpire. We got him. And a really good play then. And a really good piece of umpiring as well by Ron Ferner. Yeah. You always want to see that ball. Yep. Show me the ball. You'll even hear umpires say that. Show me the ball. Show me the ball. When the player does, then they ring him up. Connor Sheets will step in. Connor grounded out to the third baseman in his only plate appearance today. Chase Overholt, giving up just one hit today. Struck out three, has not walked a batter. Breaking ball and snapped that in for a strike. Great pitch right there by Chase Overholt. Froze Sheets at the plate. Again, his father, Brian Sheets, that's who I threw the ceremonial first pitch to. He was behind the plate. Brian, long time, long time groundskeeper here at Crestview, retiring at the end of this season as well. One and two. Overall back, fisted up to the third baseman, and the play will be made by Bockrath. Really nice pitch right in on the fist. Yeah, just jammed him. Now batting for the Knights. Evan Hart will step in now. Sheets has great strength, but unable to use it on that pitch. Tip your cap to overhaul. Evan Hart has the only hit today for the Crestview Knights. Back in the second inning, made it as far as second base on a wild pitch, but was stranded there. That one's going to be fisted as well. He's going to make the play on it, and he's going to get another base hit. Yeah, he found the place where nobody is, the Bermuda Triangle between pitcher first and second. It's a Bloop in live action, but in the scorebook tomorrow, it's a line drive, Mark. Evan Hart to first base. 
Huxley Gross will step in. Huxley plays in right field, does a sophomore. He grounded out to end inning number two. Don't think you're going to look to bunt here. You can't give up outs here late in the game. Yeah. He's going to show. Snap throw, and back safely at first base is Hart. Another piece I'll share with you, Mark, uh, from the Crestview sidelines with Coach Wharton. The signals are the same from when I played 41 years ago. <laughs> now, there are right? different indicators yeah, because oh, gotcha. yeah. so many of his former players have become coaches. Yeah. And there is an assistant coach in Tanner Kroll in the Lincoln View dugout who played at Crestview. But overall it's going to make the barehanded pickup and throws it to first base and gets the out. So a sack bunt works. As that went uh, one to three. Second out of the inning, but it does move Hart into scoring position. David Saragin will step in. He grounded out to the third baseman in his first plate appearance today. So big opportunity here for Saragin. Try and cut this lead in half. Breaking ball outside. It's 1-0. and oh. And that seems a, to be an interesting comic mm -hmm. as Lincoln View has had scoring threat after scoring threat. But Crestview, they get one across. That one's in the dirt, but Moody keeps it in front of him. It's two and zero. Oh. Crestview gets one across here, cut that lead in half, and you got a whole new ball game. But Overholt, he's just been really strong out there. Honorable mention, Northwest Conference selection last year as a freshman. Fastball grounded wide of third base. Count goes to two and one. Move that one over a couple feet is 2-1. Mm -hmm. Overhold. Fastball's fouled back. It's 2-2. Two and two. Right at the top of the zone. Saragin on it, but he couldn't do anything with it because of the location. Breaking ball inside. We'll go to full count. Talked about those nine one-run victories. The best win for the Knights this past Saturday against Van Wert, a one to zero Donnie Brook. Coach Wharton was very, very proud of his squad. And got him looking. A Lee's famous recipe check out and strikeout to end the inning as he rings up David Saragan, and that will leave two runners on. We'll go to the sixth. It's 2 to nothing, Lancer. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSA. We go to the top of the sixth. Our presenting sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. To the top of the sixth we go. And we will go to the bottom of the order. Reed Jackson, who was at the plate when Hunter Jones made the really nice play at the end, inning at number five, followed by Bolenbacher and Brandt. Outside with the first pitch. Jackson's 0 for 2 today. He's grounded out and flied out today. That pitch misses as well. It's 2 and 0. Good plate discipline again. Not just. Reed Jackson, but throughout this lineup, Preston Crasher on the corners there, trying to get him to chase. That ball's fouled away. You know, every time Reed Jackson comes to the plate, I wonder if he stole an Ayersville batting helmet. Ah, I see what you're saying. You know, it's a different blue than what some of the rest of them are wearing. Or how about Lima Bath? It could be. Yeah. Breaking ball and snapped off a strike that levels the count at two and two. Breaking ball and that missed. Good pitch. Three and two goes the count. 
Talk about Bath. How about a game that this week in the Western Buckeye League? Defiance and Wapak, one to nothing, Wapak, and they are now tied hitting the last week of the season. Fastball's inside, and he walked them. Fourth walk of the game by Kreischer. And once again, the leadoff hitter is on here in inning number six. Now batting. Great at bat for Reed Jackson. Okay, we're going to get a hitter. Dave, this would be number 10 who will step in. I'll let you grab your roster. That is Gavin Evans. So Gavin Evans will hit here in the bottom of the sixth. And we'll assume Bolenbacher will go back in to yep. right field, but we'll see how that plays out. Do you see a bunt right here? I do. I, th I think we the coach was looking for who's my who's the best bunter I've got sitting on the bench right now. Let's get that runner to second, see if we can get up 3-0 here. Yep, you're, you're thinking State Farm if you're Lincoln View. You want some insurance out there. See if you can push someone around and get away from that one-run game that Crestview <laughs> is so used to playing. Crusher would like to get another strikeout today. Our strikeouts are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Now, oh, swinging away, popped it up. First baseman headed for it and ran out of room. Sheets got over there, just not enough space to make a play on it. And I'm just trying to read Coach Fishball's nonverbals. I don't, yeah, I don't think there was any bun on there. His nonverbals nope. are positive towards his batter. Been noticing your field, Dave, actually walked on it a little bit earlier today, and you mentioned Brian Sheets, who's a retiring groundskeeper. This place is in wonderful shape. Yes, a lot of pride. Swings through that pitch. As we said, Brian Sheets, a former player in the program. And then Coach Wharton has taught his players like most coaches do around the area. You need to take care of the facility, too. So after the game, Win or lose, you'll see players out there prepping the field for the next day. 0-2 oh, as a pickoff attempt goes. Jackson back easily. But that wasn't so common back in 1984. Mm -hmm. And Coach Wharton brought that right away. If I played first base, I had to clean up the first base Got him base called area. strikeout. So Gavin Evans goes down with the fourth Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken strikeout of the day. And this will bring up Brandt. Shortstop, number 15, Seth Brandt. Brandt had a sacrifice bunt. He's also grounded out to the first baseman today. Is he squaring around again? He is. And that's a good bunt. Kreischer comes in to get it. Bare hand pickup. And did he get him? Did he pull him off there? I'm looking for the umpire's call. Yeah, let's see if they're going to ask I think, for Ron Ferner to help out. And I noticed Ron Ferner walk towards yeah. Dick Anderson right away. They may change this the call. The original call was out. And, yep, they're going to stay with the out call. <laughs> so Brand. the sacrifice works yeah. one to three. You're right, Seth Brandt. Eric Giesler down there at first base was saying, get back here. Yeah. <laughs> and we will go to the top of the order where the pitcher, Chase Overholt, will step in. But, Officially one for three, but scored two runs. Yeah, and Brant, again, give him credit. Another nice sacrifice bun. Puts the runner in scoring position. Jackson down at second base. That ball's popped up. That and one is coming towards us. About it's eight about feet to your right. I thought you might jump up and get that one. I didn't want to hurt my headset. <laughs> <laughs> one of our cameramen, <laughs> camera people, as so we have Jacob O'Neill and Abby back here, but Jacob O'Neill would not want you to damage the equipment. Yeah, I could break a finger or something, catch the ball, nobody oh, would yeah. care, but yeah. the equipment, that, that's something that's important. Well, it is. Oh, it one's the count after the foul ball. Crusher trying to keep it in a two-run game. And it's going to step back. Overhold officially one for three. Has hit the ball solid all three times. Breaking ball is outside. One and one. Holden Price is on deck. Price is one for two today with a walk.
Ball's jammed. Up in the middle it goes, and who's going to make a play on it? Looks like the shortstop will re range over and make the play. Zane Kerrigan, Saragin, and that will be out number three here in the sixth inning. It'll stay 2 to nothing, Lancers. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Crestview. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Red Oak Realty, rooted in excellence. We appreciate their sponsorship today. Our scoreboard, Lincoln View 2, Crestview nothing. Both of those runs have been scored by Chase Overholt, one in the first inning and one in the third. And Chase Overholt's made it look really good. He's got a three-hitter going, or a two-hitter going with three strikeouts. Has not walked a batter. And he scored both runs for the Lancers, yep. so you got to tip your cap to him right now. Bottom of the order, the ninth man, Levi Grace. The center fielder will step in. Levi popped up to the pitcher back in the third inning. That ball's lined over the third baseman's head. So George will, uh, Grace will step in with a hit. That will open the inning up for Crestview, and that will bring the top of the order up, Hunter Jones. Good way to start the inning, Dave. Outstanding way for Crestview to start the inning. They have six outs to play with. Obviously, unless they tie it and send it to extras, but the catcher. what two. a way to get Hunter things rolling Jones. here. And we'll see Chase Overholt bear down a little bit with one on, nobody out. Hunter Jones is 0 for 2. He's flied out both times to the right fielder today. It's 319 on the season. Breaking ball. Strike one. Nice pitch there by Overhold off speed. Levi Grace has three stolen bases on the season. I'm sure whether this is the position to gamble on that or not, but he might be running with a little hit and run action of some type. Fastball's low, good pickup by Moody. I think if that hit and run's gonna come into play, the count's gotta be advantageous mm -hmm. for it. So one and one, I don't see it happening, but. Sometimes you start a play just to try to make something happen. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Grace with a decent lead over there. Overholt looks at him. Breaking balls hit the third. Pick up by Bockrath. They get the one at first and safe at first base. Got to pick off, got to play at second, but couldn't turn it over. So we had a fielder's choice. Nice play by Bockrath. Got caught between hops now right there. Played it shortstop. perfectly 10, in order to get the lead out at second. Saragin will step in. Got a couple of outs by hitting the ball up in the air today. One by the caught by the pitcher, the other by the first baseman in foul territory. Jones is at first base now. He has eight stolen bases as a catcher. Pitch is high. And he does lead the Crestview squad in that category. So I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Wharton puts him in motion, as you said, try and make something happen. Got a pretty good lead at first base. Ball's hit the left center, but able to track it down in the left center is Cal Evans for the second out of the inning. And that will bring up Bryson Penix today. Bryson's 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out to second base. As we Bryson talked during Penix. the break, Mark, just a beautiful night uh, for baseball. 78 degrees, our game time temperature. Our attendance today, 217 show up for today's colossal oh, confrontation. You counted them? Is that how we got to that? Uh, Austin Fleming was here. I said, hey, give me a quick count. Our okay. Crestview athletic director. He does He is on top everything. of things. He mm -hmm. called me today about the game, and that doesn't happen very often, not that it needs to, but he called me about the game today. Wanted to talk about where we were going to situate ourselves, make sure we had the right equipment and so on. I really appreciate that. Foul ball. Big at bat right here for the Knights, and specifically Bryson Penix. Fastball's grounded up the middle, but a nice play by the shortstop, uh, Seth Brandt, and the freshman goes to second base for the out. And the leadoff runner will be stranded at the top of the seventh. It's 2 0 Lancers. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN.
Top of the seventh at Crestview, our strikeout sponsor has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Well, Dave, we've had a total of seven strikeouts today, four by uh, Preston Kreischer, who's back on the mound for the seventh inning, three of them from Overholt. And Price will step in to hit. Yeah, decent number of strikeouts. And both teams, batters have put the bat on the ball as well. Price today has struck out, walked, and singled. 2-0 oh is the count. Again, the Knights with three losses. Lincoln View was six. They have one common opponent that beat both of them. Trivia question, do you know who it is? I don't. 3-0. Oh. The Blue Jays. St. John's. I thought that. And you know how you like to play with numbers in the mm -hmm. game of baseball? Sure. Identical score. Mm. Three to zero. So four pitch walk will open the seventh inning for Price. That's the fifth walk today, given up by Preston Kreischer. And that will bring to the plate Jack Dunlap. Jack walked his last time up after having a single and then a, an out back in the uh, third inning. Left handed hitter will step in. Price, the center fielder, has got some wheels, and you can see Chrysler's going to keep him close. Yeah, holding Price with. Well, I thought I had it down, but I don't know how many stolen bases he has. He's leaning, but pitch is wide. So five consecutive balls thrown here and to start the seventh inning by Preston Chrysler. That pitch is high. This might well be wait until he throws a strike before he put any type of play on. And with that, Coach Wharton's going to go to the mound, and is he going to make a change? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Pitching change here in the top of the seventh. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Preston Crusher's day is finished on the mound. He will be replaced by Zane Saragan. Dave, you got some numbers on yeah, him. Yeah, Zane Saragan, the freshman. He has pitched 11 innings this on year in five nice. games. Number he has 10. not started any Zane games. Saragin. He has one win, 14 strikeouts, given up five free passes, and has an ERA of 1.27. David Saragan, who was the designated hitter, will move in to play third base. Bryson Penix will move from third to short, as Zane Saragan was the shortstop. The count is 2-0. and oh. And Holden Price there at first base has nine thefts on the season. And Saragan throws the first pitch strike. Situation Two right there, that was a take the whole way. Mm -hmm just to see if the freshman, Zane Saragin, is going to be able to come with a strike right away, and he does. Timeout was called by Dunlap at the plate. Fastball, makes it two and two. Throws in a couple of strikes to come in out of the Shortstop position. Yeah, you, you can't finish that recipe any better right now as far as your first two pitches. Let's see what Saragin does here with the veteran Dunlap at the plate. 2-2 two -two count. It was high. Goes full. And again, Holden Price down there at first with a good lead, but no thoughts of trying to steal on Hunter Jones. Full count, zero, no outs. Do you put him in motion here, Mark? I would, but shows you what I know. Ball's golfed up in the air. Center fielder Grace coming in to make a play and does so. He's had a nice game out there in center field today. Yeah, a lot of action. Yeah, made a lot of plays. Miles Moody will step in. Miles has a hit in three at-bats. Possibly in contention for the best play of the game defensively for either squad, mm -hmm. where he did that 360 on that mm -hmm. one fly yep. ball. Moody has 11 RBIs on the season. 
And obviously, when you do a 360, you have to take your eyes off the ball for a second. That was an impressive catch out there early in the game. Butt it up in the air. Price jumps on it real quick. Did he get him at second? He did not. Ball was dropped at second base. So that's going to be an error, a fielder's choice and an error by the shortstop. He kind of clutched his throw, didn't he? And yeah, a little I think, bit. I think it kind of threw the timing off a little bit on the reception. Bockrath in to hit now. And I think Jones clutched the throw or pumped the throw because he didn't see anybody. He wasn't right there, that's base. correct. Initially. So two runners on with one out. Bockrath takes a fastball strike. So Austin's for, uh, 0 for 2 today with a walk. So for Moody, you, you, there's a sacrifice and an error on that play, correct? It would be a sacrifice, mm -hmm. not a fielder's choice, wouldn't it? Thank you for correcting my scorebook. He had the easy out at first if he wanted to, but he wanted to knock off that lead runner and keep him out of scoring position. The air at second base was the problem then. Second error in the baseball game today by Crestview. And the Lancers find themselves with another runner in scoring position. Breaking ball outside. One and one's the count. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN anywhere at any time. Sign up at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple. Step back with a one-on-one -on -one count and one out. Yeah, Bachrath 0 for 2 with the walk, as you mentioned earlier. He's due. Long look. Saragin, that ball's hit in the left field, and that's hit a long way. It's going to bounce off the wall. One run will score, and they're going to hold the runner at first on a double and an RBI for Austin Bockrath. As we said, he was due. He hit that one all the way to the fence, Mark. Gets an RBI, a big insurance run pushing the lead to 3-0 in favor of the Lancers. Price scored from second base. Moody moves up to third and a double by Bockrath. That is his 14th RBI of the season. It makes it 3-0 on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. The designated hitter, Aiden Hardesty. Here comes Hardesty, the DH today. Tough day for him. He struck out twice and flied out to center field. 333 on the season. He's got seven RBIs, and there's two of them sitting out there waiting for him right here. That run was charged. Ball's grounded, foul, big hop. That ball, that run was be charged to Kreischer. He gave up three runs. Two of them are earned today. Well, with that error at second Correct. base, let's think that one through yes. a little bit. Maybe just one of the three would be earned, wouldn't it? Yep. In six plus innings today. Pitch is high. Jones goes up to get that one. It's one and one. Continuing on with Kreischer. He struck out four today and walked five. Gave up five hits, three runs. One of them was earned. Counts one and one to Hardesty. Swings through that pitch. Saragin goes to the top of the zone right there. Gets Hardesty to chase. I think Aiden can smell those RBIs. Mm. He's being aggressive at yeah. the plate, and I think Coach Fishball's going to tell him, settle down, stay within yourself here a little bit. With a one and two count. Hardesty's a senior this year, hitting 333 in his DH role.
Ball's fouled back. He knows if you just make solid contact, even if it's on the ground, you got a chance for a base hit because the Crestview defense has to play in. They cannot allow another run here in the top of the seventh. Play an add-on here in the seventh. That was high, and that was a tough pitch to take because that was close. Mm -hmm. Two and two. Good eye. Good eye, good pitch. Reed Jackson's on deck. That one stays high. It's full count. First base is open, but that would load him for Jackson. As we said, Zane Sergan, 11 innings pitched on the season, just seems to be trying to overpower a little bit, leaving the ball high. That's fouled away. That was a good pitch, good piece mm -hmm. of hitting there by Hardesty to make contact. Really, the first pitch in this at-bat that was at the bottom part of the zone, so Hardesty had to adjust. His sight lines, it's been a high strike when it's been a strike throughout this at-bat. It's been a seven-pitch at-bat already. Ground ball to third, and it takes a big hop. And it was knocked down by David Sarrigan. See what the official score gives that one. That was a hard hit yeah, ball. Yeah, my thought is that that is a base hit. We'll see how they score. Well, they that. put air on the board. No, Dave. no, there was three up there prior to this. Was it? Yes. So, uh, and I do only have two airs for Crestview, but they did have three up earlier. Maybe they were anticipating that. <laughs> we'll see. But boy, I thought that was a tough one. Cal Evans will run. Cal has been uh, the left fielder today. And Hardesty has been hitting for him. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm was. wrong. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong because it was five, and I thought there were three airs up there. But our books, we only have two airs for Crestview up to this point. So. Either way, the bases are loaded. Yes. And we're looking at Reed Jackson, 0 for 2 in a walk today. Sarah going to go out of the windup. High, high with ball one. That was a good pitch. Had to wait a moment to see what our home plate umpire called it, but on the outside corner and at the knees, good pitch, leaving the count at one and one. And that one's high. They still haven't made a decision on that because we did have three errors because we had two coming into this inning and then we had the throw to second, the drop ball for the mm. third error on Crestview. Well, they did not mark his hit either, yes, so I'm correct. not sure what, what, what they're going to give it. And that's going to be dribbled foul and take a good hop if you're a Crestview Knight. And we'll make the count two and two. And make a decision, and then again, the Northwest Conference will look at the film. Oh. And tomorrow they'll change Do it, they have just to like call, Major League Baseball. Well, they have to call New York and see <laughs> yes, what the exactly. call is on that. Uh -huh. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Two twos, the count on Jackson with the bases loaded and one out here in the top of the seventh. Already 3-0 Lancers on the Red Oak Realty scoreboard. Yeah, they get a base hit here. They're putting a crooked number up. That was a tough breaking ball to take. Count goes to 2-2, two -two, or 3-2. Two. Full up, bases loaded, no place to put him. That ball's hit up in the air. Tagging at third. That's hit a long way. And falls off the glove of the outfielder, Evan Hart. That'll bring one in. And here comes a second run. And in fact, Cal Evans thought about trying to score as well. A pair of runs scored as Moody scored, Bachras scored. Reed Jackson hit that about as far as you can hit it without it going out of here. Well, as we talked early on, Dave, this is a very spacious park, and in a lot of places that would have been gone. 
Again, waiting on the scoreboard to see how they ruled it. It went off the glove of the left fielder, Evan Hart. I thought it was a hit. We'll go with that. All right, let's do that. Either way, it's five to nothing. Lancers with three here in the top of the seventh to create that five-run margin. Ball one. Ball's on the inside part of the plate. Two and oh. Hardesty's at uh, first, Jackson, or the third, Jackson's at first. Two and one's the count. Lincoln View plays Minster tomorrow. Lipsick on well, Friday, Ada Saturday. Crestview plays Wayne Trace on Saturday. Ball's down, Dave. They put a fourth air on the board. Okay. So we're gonna go with an air on that last one. And take away the two RBIs. That pitch is high, and we're going to walk in the bases and load it again. See if Coach Wharton's going to make a decision here or stay with the S freshman. Saradin's first walk. Seth Brandt will be at the plate. He's got a Couple of sacrifice bunts today. It's officially 0 for 1. And he's down talking with Coach Fishbaugh. There's a little meeting on the mound between Jones and Saradin. A senior freshman discussion. Jones the senior. Saradin the freshman. Hunter just trying to keep the young pup locked in here. Work on throwing strikes, let your defense help you. That's got to be the theme right now. Overholds on deck. Suicide squeeze, and it's going to be fouls. Good play by the catcher. Yeah, Jones, Jones get out and jump on that one. Yeah, he came down the line a long way. That ball was in the, the base path, if you will, and it hit the grass on the foul side. It was working its way mm -hmm. back to fair ter territory. Jones doesn't get a hand on that. It's executed perfectly by the Lancers. Brant with two sacrifices already. Stopped by Jones. That was in the dirt. He was the count at one and one. Coach Fishball flashing the signs down there. Mark, I get the feeling the scoreboard is just not cooperating I right now. I think out you're there. exactly right. The score's incorrect. There they got the score back to where it needs to be as far as the total. Yeah. It's also one and two is the count. They've got that straightened out as well. Jones sets up outside. Breaking ball's high. Two and two. Eighth batter in the inning is Seth Brandt. That's popped up on the infield, and foul. How far behind me uh, was I say? I think you could have used those long arms, maybe got a hand on that one, but again, you might have broken a finger. That would have been okay. No, no. Just don't <laughs> pull a, yeah, the cord okay. out, of the, out of the system here and create an issue where we can't hear your wonderful voice to finish this one off. Two twos to count. Saragin with a hold. That ball's hit in the gap. Cut off by the center fielder. One runs in. Here comes the second run in. And the Lancers have broken it open. Seth Brandt takes that curveball, drives it into the left center field gap. And as you said, 
Five runs now in the inning to break it open for the Lancers. And we go back to the top of the order, Chase Overholt. Now batting the pitcher. That seven was actually correct that they put up on the school board a little while ago. <laughs> a premonition, crystal ball. Runners on first and second for Overholt. He's going to ground the ball to the second baseman. Flipped his, no, did not flip his, did he get him at first? They did. And the runner's going to score all the way from second. No, he did not. They got to play at second, didn't they? I'm only seeing, we missed one somewhere. Because that's the third out of the that's inning. That's the third out of the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. The Lancers have put five on the board in the sixth. Go to the, in the seventh, we'll go to the bottom of the seventh. It's seven to nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. Well, Dave, we kind of got that straightened out a little yes. bit there. What happened was a double play. Yeah. The shortstop made the pickup. That was Bryson Penick. Stepped on second base, got the ball across the field to the first baseman, Sheets, and that was a double play to get out of the inning. I did not see uh, Mr. Anderson raise his hand at second base. That's my error on that one. Either way, they put five on the board on our Red Oak Realty scoreboard today and make it seven to nothing as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance for the Knights. And they will start out with, looking to see who's in the, Number 16, we're going to go with a pinch hitter. Yes, we are. And that is Derek Yinger, Jr. Derek Yinger will step in for his first appearance today. Well, I'm an accomplice on that situation at the end of the last half inning because I didn't see us see Crestview touch second base either. Ball on the inside part to Yinger. And that pitch is high, 2-0. Oh. We've got a little bit of a glare from where the sun is right now, and yep. I did not see Mr. Anderson. That's a strike. Call that to down there at the out at second base. Breaking ball stays inside. It's 3-1. and one. Well, actually 4-1. Got a ball there. I missed one. So a walk to open up the, now for the, Knights, the first baseman, seventh by Yinger. And that will bring up Connor Sheets. Connor's 0 for 2 today. That's the first walk, Dave. I, that's the first walk I have for Chase Overhold, I believe. I believe so, yeah. yes. Three strikeouts today. Pitch is low. And you're Coach Fishball again. You're like, hey, let's just let's just fire the mitt. Hit Miles Moody's mitt. Breaking ball. That stayed outside. Two and zero. Oh. But he did sit a long time. That was a long half inning for the Lancers. Got to find that rhythm, reestablish if you're Chase Overholt. There's a strike. The sheets. Two and one. Evan Hart's on deck. Two hits for the Knights in this game. Does Evan Hart have? Twirled that breaking ball in there for a 2-2 two -two count. Just want to fire strikes if you're Chase Overholt. A tying run for the Knights right now. Somewhere in Kaleida, I think. <laughs> Got a long way to go with three outs to play with. That ball's hit down the third baseline. Pick up at third base by Bachrath. And did he get him? No. He did not. Pulled him off. Here's a runner trying to move up. Going to have a throwing here. Yeah, throwing air on Bachrath. So an E5, that's the first error. According to the scoreboard today. Mm -hmm. And here comes Coach Fishbaugh to the mound, and we're going to get a pinch runner to second base. That would be number 21. We'll run for Sheets. Find that for you here, real, okay. real quickly. Number 21, Hayden Book, a junior for the Knights. Second 
So that will put runners on first and third, or did he make it all the way to second? Dave? He did get to he second. He did get to yep. second runners on the air. I'm looking and to see third. where everybody's at. Okay, second and third. And we are going to have a pitching we change are. here for the Lancers. So while they do that pitching change, let's take a break. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at uh, Crestview. Lincoln View has made a pitching change. Luke Bolenbacher will come in to pitch here in the seventh inning. Dave, you got some numbers on Luke? Yeah, Luke's pitched 44 and one-third innings in seven starts. He has six wins, 27 strikeouts, 16 base on balls, and owns a nifty 1.43 ERA. Chase Overholt will move to right field. They, those two just exchange positions. And with runners on second, third, Evan Hart will step in, and he has two of the uh, three hits today that the Knights have been able to corral. Coach Fishball decides to make the change here. Chase Overholt, the sophomore, uh, he's had some injuries uh, this year, so it's don't want to push the issue here with him. And then you bring Bolenbacher in, and you haven't played this week because of the weather, and give him an inning here. Well, Chase Overholt wants to see three outs because yes. Chase Overholt has not given up an earned run on the season, and the guy at third base is his. The guy at second base was on by error. Bolenbacher's first pitch is high. Although, if you're the Lancers, you just want outs. Mm -hmm. You'd like to help your teammate out where, where he keeps that number, but you just want outs. That's a strike. One and one's the count. Blew that one by him. That's a strike also. One and two. Hart's two for two on the day. Pair of singles, hit the second base both times, but was unable to cross the plate. Pitch is high, we'll go 2-2. Two, two. Bolenbacher's wind up free and easy out there. Very smooth. He's a senior, been in these type of situations before. Replacing the sophomore Overholt. Breaking ball, and that went wide. That was a tough pitch to take, Dave. I thought it was yeah. on the corner from our angle. Of course, we don't have the best angle, but that was a tough pitch to take. Good eye at the plate by Hart. That was a nice pitch. Makes it a full count. And got him with a fastball at the bottom of the zone. A Lee's famous recipe chick out, chicken strikeout for Bolenbacher. Yeah, that's a tough one to take after the previous pitch was right there on the edge. One out in the inning, though. Runners still on second and third for the Knights. Huxley Gross will step in. Officially 0 for 1 with a sacrifice today, and he takes a first pitch strike. The ball's hit foul. 0 and 2. Now you just want to make contact. Two strikes. That one's hit foul. And went out of play. That's out of our line of vision, but it went out of play. Yeah, Jack Dunlap, great effort. Over to the fence, but unable to come up with it. So the count remains at 0-2. That's something you like as a coach and you love as a pitcher. You're up seven runs, but your first baseman giving you everything he's got. That one will be bounced foul. Count remains 0-2. Game's approaching two hours old.
And got him with a call, strike three there. Another Lee's famous recipe chicken strikeout for Luke Bolenbacher. And Crestview is down to their final out with David Saragin to come to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout today. And Bolenbacher missed with that pitch. Play the cardinal rule here, making throw a strike, although Coach Wharton not giving the take sign. That will even the count at 1-1. One, one. Down by seven runs, just trying to play one pitch at a time. Had him fool badly with that curveball. That, that one broke right off the table. You can see right there why Bolenbacher has the six wins for these Lancers. Leads them in several statistical categories. One and two. Ooh. And hit him right in the helmet. Wow. So, Saragin will be hit by a pitch and will trot down to first base, and that's why you're glad you have those helmets, I'm glad Dave. you have the helmet on. And, again, I think he was – Anticipating a curveball right there, but that one came up and in, and it didn't break. Glad David's okay down there at first base. Yeah. So Levi Grace will step in. We're going to get a pinch runner at first base, and we'll see who pops out of the dugout here. Looks like number 12, Dave. Rex Gerardo, the junior for the Knights. Coach Wharton have a little discussion with Grace. Number 12, Rex <laughs> Levi had a solid line drive over the third baseman's head in his last at bat. One of the three hits that they have corralled today, the Knights have. He has one, Evan Hart has the other two. Two outs, bases loaded. Bolenbacher, breaking balls low. Hunter Jones is on deck. He'd like to get one more crack at Lancer pitching today. Strike on the outside part of the plate. And if he does, if Jones does get that at bat, that means that Crestview has eliminated the shutout. They will have to have scored a run. Missed on the breaking ball with a swing that time. One and two, had him fooled with that one. Breaking ball has a sharp bite to it. Here's Bolenbacher with a one and two count, two outs. That breaking ball is outside, it'll be two and two. Good hold right there by Grace. That one, again, broke sharply. Moody with a snag, though, to keep the ball from going to the backstop. Two and two, two outs. And Bowling Blocker blew him away. He came in and struck out the side. And that will be a seven to nothing victory in favor of the Lincoln View Lancers, Dave. The Lancers had seven runs, six hits, they had an air, they left nine on. Crestview, no runs, three hits, four errors. They left six on today. The winning pitcher will be Chase Overholt. He'll go to 4-0, and, and he will keep his perfect 0, 0.00 ERA. Struck out three, walked one, gave up three hits. Bolenbacher came in, hit a batter, but struck out three. Kind of a dominating pitching performance today for the, the Lancers. Yeah, an overall great performance by Chase Overholt, both on the mound and at the plate. He scores Lincoln View's first two runs, has a double on the day, and then, as you said, pitching-wise, the numbers bared out. An outstanding effort by Chase Overhaul and Lincoln View as a whole. Now they play Lipsick. Lipsick undefeated in the league, 7-0. Lincoln View undefeated in the league at 6-0. and uh, going to go a long way as to who wins the conference championship. And that, that game will be Friday evening. 
Lincoln View goes to 14 and 6. They are 6 and 0. Crestview will be got dropped to 12 and 4. They are 6 and 2. And I think you mentioned Lincoln View also has a game then on Saturday with Ada to wrap up the NWC year, the C year. Yeah, and Crestview 12 and 4 now, 6 and 2. They finish up league play as of tonight. They're going to finish in that second spot, second, third spot in the league. Now they turn their eyes towards tournament. And Dave Preston Kreischer, as he's going to end up with a loss, he dropped his record to three and two, but he actually pitched six pretty good innings, struck out four, walked five, gave up a five hits, three runs, only one of which was earned. He actually had a pretty good outing for him today. And that has been the situation with Crestview all year long, as we mentioned throughout the telecast they have nine one run victories all low scoring their pitching has been outstanding all year long it's been the hitting that has been a challenge at times but you don't want to take anything away from chase overholt tonight he was outstanding on the mound it was going to be a tough challenge regardless crestview unable to come up with some timely hits lincoln view does they walk away with the w well to thank our sponsors today our scoreboard sponsor was red oak realty our strikeout sponsor was lee's famous recipe chicken we had three of those in the final inning there by Luke Bollenbacher. And our presenting sponsor today has been Loudix Jewelry. I thank Dave Bowen today for your commentary, Dave, and congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Abby Beck did our camera work. So did Jacob O'Neill. And Jacob will take us back to the station and edit it all together. Lincoln View 7, crush you nothing. You've been watching High School Baseball on WOSN. <laughs>